It is once again, dear congregants, Erev Shabbos. It's Friday, another week has gone by, and we are hopefully progressing towards resuming life, work, and living the way we are accustomed. This morning, this Friday morning, I walked into our sanctuary. Yes, our office is up and running. The shul is open for business uh, as we are keeping our congregation functioning, even though we don't have any live services. I walked into the sanctuary early this morning. It was dark and forlorn, as beautiful as our sanctuary is, and there were beams of light shining through the east side stained glass windows. And the light was shining upon the silk seasonal flowers that Jan Katz has kindly donated and takes care of updating every couple of months so that our sanctuary has some beauty and color. And the beams of light were highlighting the yellow, the lavender, the purple colors of the flowers. And it occurred to me, as I returned to my office where I'm now recording this message to you, that in our Torah portion, Emor, that we should have read in synagogues around the world tomorrow, this is the middle or towards the end, I should say, of the book of Leviticus, chapters 21, 22, 23, and 24 of Leviticus. And in other parts of the Torah, specifically in Shemot in Exodus and other parts of Leviticus, the Torah goes to great length to instruct us on mitzvot commandments, to sanctify space and time. For example, we have in Exodus 25, 8, that famous Pasuk sentence, Ba'asuli Mikdash, make me a sanctuary, Beshachanti betocham, and I shall dwell amongst the people. Our sanctuary has no people, and therefore it is forlorn. Bricks, mortar, silk flowers are meaningless unless there are people to fill the space. And this Torah portion and more goes to great length to sanctify time. For example, it has the Sefirat HaOmer, which we are in the midst of at this time. And more specifically, from Leviticus chapter 23, sentence 4, and other psukim, Eile Moade Hashem, Mikra e Kodesh, Asher Tikru Otam, Bemo Adam. These, and uh, this is a rough translation, though I've also consulted the Eitz Chaim Chumash for their choice of words. That's the red Chumash that we use. These are the set times, it says, the sacred occasions of God that you shall proclaim in their set times. And then it goes on to enumerate the five uh, Torah-based major holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, along with the Sefirat HaOmer. I love the Sefirat HaOmer, and I have talked many times about it because of its discipline of daily mitzvah, of counting each day, for seven weeks continually, without interruption, making a bracha, sanctifying the day, and being aware of the sanctity of each and every day. So dear friends, as we are more or less confined to our bayit, our batim, our homes, it is upon us to follow the Torah the mitzvot in the Torah, to sanctify our homes, make each day special, since we can't come to shul, to the specifically designated sanctified space, 
Make our homes a sanctified space. Tonight is Shabbos. Why not join us at 5.45 p.m. for our virtual service? Every night, Monday through Thursday at 7.30 p.m., we have a lovely chug, a lovely group, a virtual minion, anything from 23 down to just 10 people a minion. Every night, we have some different people, some new people, and many, many regulars who seem to enjoy the daily routine of sanctifying the day through prayer, through connecting with each other, even though it is a virtual community. So tonight, Shabbos, tomorrow's Shabbos, make the day special. Do something that will sanctify the day. Read a Jewish book. Take out a prayer book. Daven. Pray in, pray in Hebrew, pray in English. Doesn't matter. Light candles tonight, as I said before. Join us for our virtual minion. Friday nights, we daven at 5.45 p.m., so some of us can bring Shabbos in early. But whatever the case is, I wish you all a wonderful Shabbat, followed by a wonderful week. Be peaceful, be healthy, be safe, be well, be optimistic, be joyful. Thank you for listening. Lehitraot, see you soon.